All right, everybody, welcome back to the Get It Done podcast. My name is Joe Zanke, your host, co-founder, COO of On Demand Storage, who sponsors the podcast. And today I'm with my guest, Brian French of Red Earth Productions. Brian, what's going on? Not much, man. How are you doing? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Well, uh, like we said before we uh, hopped on here, we're working. So, you know, no complaints <laughs> there. Yeah, I think I think we might be a little warmer here in the St. Louis area than you are in Boston, though, man. I think so. It's about five degrees here and the wind chills down to in the negatives. So uh, that's been no fun leading up to this day. How, how about how about over where you are? We are we are 50 degrees and sunny. God, <laughs> that's all I want. That's all I want, Brian. It's just a little bit of sun. I want to go play some golf after work. I want to do all those things. It's right around the corner, though, hopefully. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> so look, man, I, um, I appreciate you coming on. I am uh, excited to talk to you, learn a little bit more about what you guys do. So tell me about Red Earth Productions and, um, and you know, how you got started doing what you do. You know, um, I went to school for uh, communications production, video production, and um, it's back in uh, three quarter inch tape days. You know, it's, it's, it's been a moment. And I did a lot of work with, uh, with my father in ministry outside of the country, Mexico, Puerto Rico, and we traveled a lot. And I, I started doing that. When I came back to the States, though, I got into some other uh, opportunities working-wise and whatnot. And um, I'd been there for most of my, most of my adult life. Uh, but I thought, you know, I, I just want to do something that I want to do. And, and I started Red Earth Productions in 2015 with that. Uh, creativity in mind, what I wanted to do, how I wanted to do it. My, my kids were older and I wanted an opportunity to give them something that if they wanted to do, they were both creative uh, in what they did in, in their personalities. And uh, so it kind of started with just that in mind. And we started just working from there, um, looking at different opportunities. What, what can we do with a production company? content creation, graphic design. Um, you know, as you know, video is king. We're sitting here doing video, right? Absolutely. Um, and uh, so the thought process kind of just went from there and we started just building it, talking about it. And the thinking, in my opinion, and what, uh, you know, we're discussing here is always about relationships. Relationships are, 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 are very difficult, I think, especially in our day and age. Um, how many people you meet, you're, you're talking to people in a very quick fashion, you know, it's boom, boom, boom. And developing relationships sometimes get difficult. And I think it's difficult within business. Yeah. You know, so we, we started talking about that. And how do we develop relationships with our community, with the people? And how did we want to build our business? And how did that happen? And that's kind of because we were a production company first, but then we, we've, we've melded into this whole context of, of brand marketing with what we do. And uh, my daughter, uh, who works with me, um, she started that side of it and works with that. And we've, we've had a lot of We've had a lot of success with it. And then on the other hand, we've, we've, we, we continue to do our production and my son finished school this past year. He graduated uh, from college and he's been running our video production side and we've been, that's been growing. We do a lot of stuff with baseball in the community, our youth baseball Midwest channel on YouTube and it's gone very well and, and just different things producing and we're, we're producing videos and, and doing graphic design for clients and things. So that's kind of what we've done and what we've created out of it. That's, that's kind of red earth productions in a nutshell. It's awesome. It's an awesome story. Um, and you know, so you guys are a family owned business. I mean, that's mm -hmm. pretty cool. And it was founded on those, um, those kind of cores as a family owned business. Talk to me about, you know, some of the values that you've seen in, um, in just being a family owned business. You know, what is, um, what's been kind of special about that to you? I mean, it must be cool working with your, with your kids on a day-to-day -day basis on something that you guys <laughs> kind of just created. Yeah, they might not think so, but <laughs> <laughs> working with dad, it might not be that cool, but no, we, we're, it's fun. You know, it has its challenges. Um, you know, and really developing that different relationship. I think that's one of the biggest things I've had to deal with myself. And I'll be honest, it's, it's not always been easy with both my children. 
you know, because you're they're they're adults, uh, they have their own mind, they they're working, they're thinking, they're doing, and learning how to develop that relationship, I think, is 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 a whole nother level um in business when you're working with your family and understanding, yeah, that's dad, you know, oh yeah, that's my daughter, oh yeah, that's my son. But then how do we develop that relationship, that working relationship? And how does that transform into those things? So those were things that were, were very difficult. And I wanted to set in place because I've been in corporate America. I've, I've been in those things and whatnot. And I understand the, 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 the value of, of core values and setting that foundation to where this is a baseline for everybody to work from. This is what we do. This is who we are as people. Then it's got to reflect in our business as well. Definitely, definitely. And, you know, it kind of, you know, uh, I think these are things that pretty basic to most people, you know, trust, um, honesty, integrity. But the two things that we, we added to the, our, our core values is uh, passion and love. Because we are a, a family business and this Absolutely. is a passion of ours. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's born out of the love that we have for each other. It's, I mean, yeah. And that's, um, yeah, it's so important. You know what I mean? And, and, um, and, and you, you touched upon a couple of really good things there, you know, obviously having those core values, um, and, you know, going into each day, going into each customer relationship, you know, with that as a foundation is, is key to building, um, long lasting, meaningful relationships with it, which I think is what we want to do, um, with every client, you know, in any business. Um, so that's fantastic. But you talked about a couple of challenges, um, which I've actually personally seen too, because, you know, I, I'm not necessarily a family owned business, but, you know, throughout the tenure of on-demand storage, I've had a lot of relatives come help work here. Um, friends, you know what I mean? People who right. started off as something different than a coworker. You know what I mean? They started off as a, a brother or a cousin or a, um, in your case, you know, a child, um, or a friend, you know what I mean? That you had a different relationship completely before you guys became coworkers. And so it's a challenge to identify um, and kind of like cross over, you know, those barriers. Like at what point do you, are you their boss versus at what point are you their dad? At what point am I a brother or a cousin or a friend? And at what point am I, you know, the boss in this situation? And so it can be challenging in that sense. Um, but if everyone's on the same team, everyone's on the same, you know, wavelength when you're in the office or on a job or doing, you know, performing work, um, you know, what, what the hierarchy kind of looks like, where each person falls into place um, and how the, you know, how the natural development of the relationship needs to work in order for you to be successful, then, you know, it becomes a lot easier. But I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say that it's been easy for me every single time, you know, having to just step in and be the boss in certain situations where prior to that, you know, our relationship, um, I never had to do something like that with that person as like my friend. Right. And you know, Joe, the one thing that I think um, what I saw when I started looking at this was I didn't want it to fail. And so what do I do? How do I go about this? Because I am working with my kids. So I, I think sometimes people don't maybe take the professional look at these things in this respect. So one of the things I did was I set job descriptions. Mm -hmm. This is yeah. your job description. Yes, you're responsible to that be accountable to it. And if you're not following that we have to talk about these things. So having that job description, understanding what your your day to day duties are. And sometimes I think that that happens in that family uh, business side that somebody says, well, you never said I had to do that, you know, <laughs> right, and it becomes right, right. the argument and I'm sure you've been in those situations. And I, I have too in those respects. But that so we've really taken that that uh, that professional approach, looking at these things, understanding you know we are family, but we all are dedicated to being professionals in what we do, and how uh, people see our company, and when we're working together, they understand that we're here because of our core values, because we do believe, and the th one of the things we we talk about are kind of tagline, I guess, if you'd say, you know, building business from the inside out, 
through relationships and not transactions. And so having those, those descriptions in place helps us build our professional relationship as well. Oh, hundred percent. I mean, I think you've taken the right approach right from the very beginning um, in the sense that, you know, you've recognized that, you know, not only do, is it going to help the business that everyone knows and you've built out job descriptions for each individual, but it's going to help, you know, identify those relationships within the business um, and help map those out right from the very beginning so that everyone kind of knows what their responsibilities are. And I think that it probably, you know, takes away um, a lot of like the worry about having to manage someone who's your daughter or your son or manage someone who's your brother or cousin. If they know just like, Hey, like this relationship is, um, is basically just, these are their responsibilities and these are my responsibilities. As long as I stick to my responsibilities and they stick to theirs, it's going to continue to work. And as long as we kind of work in harmony, making sure those happen, then, you know, like you said, it's not going to fail. Um, but it's tough if you, if you probably weren't to put those in place and I've seen it firsthand where I, maybe I didn't put like an actual job description onto, and then, you know, threw a, um, a relative or a friend into a position that didn't have a job description. If that changed, or if I asked, you know, more of them, um, it just kind of created a little bit of a different dynamic that maybe was more challenging than if it was like a stranger, you know what I mean? Because it was like, Hey, yeah, I know when you first started here, you didn't have to work on Saturday or Sunday, but now we have a bunch of jobs on Saturday or Sunday. I need you to work. It's like, Joe, you know, if I had written that down prior to them agreeing um, and they recognize like, Hey, this is what I'm supposed to do as just an employee at this company. That's one thing. But if I just, you know, throw them into it and then add that on top, and it's, you know, businesses change all the time. Businesses grow, businesses change. You have to adapt. Um, but that's where, you know, having those descriptions in place has probably been key for you is just avoiding situations like that and having everybody kind of just being on the same team, realizing where they fit, just like a sports team, you know, the quarterback's not responsible for making tackles. He's responsible for throwing the ball. And um, so, yeah, I mean, I think you were very wise to make that decision up front and just to, to just put those things in place. It's helped us. It's helped us when we've uh, been in tight situations. I think uh, uh, that understanding, and I can go to that. This is what we're dealing with. This is what we do, and learning that approach. And I, I think it's helped them understand, you know, how to do their job. You know, we're we all are. I and I've made my kids partners in this too. I want them to understand that they are that they're part of this, growing, moving forward. Um, you have an opportunity here. And so your job description just isn't about, you know, something you're doing, but accountable to yourself as a business owner. Absolutely. Definitely. And um, that accountability standpoint is, is also huge because you, like you said, you're accountable to your production at the business, but you're also, you know, you want them to have that accountability to themselves. You want them to own um, what they're creating. Um, you guys are all creating it together. And so exactly. it's not, it's not that they're working for you. They're also working for themselves. Um, so that's all good stuff. Um, so within production, obviously, you know, in 2021, there's um, a lot of cool things you can do with technology. Um, how are you guys kind of utilizing technology, you know, nowadays with your customers, you know, what type of um, maybe different softwares that are out there that maybe or different types of programs or different, you know, approaches that you can use on, in your business to, you um, elevate your services? Are you guys seeing anything like that or utilizing anything like that to kind of, you know, be the best you can be? We always are looking at technology and how we grow and how we continue to uh, better our product. Um, we've been using, you know, we use Adobe creative uh, products uh, for all of our um, editing software. We, we, the dynamics with Photoshop Illustrator, After Effects, creating, always looking to push those boundaries. Uh, we're always looking at technology in that way. And I, I, I'll be honest, um, my son, he's that guy. He's the one that takes and is doing all the research. He's on that cutting edge of that. And he's always bringing information. He's always looking uh, just off the top of my head, you know, looking at uh, um, how we are going to be able to be more efficient in how we work, 
how we're creative. We've looked at different editing software. Yep, how does yep. that fit within our, our, our culture and what we're trying to accomplish? You know, looking at uh, animation, looking at 3D, looking at all those things as we, as we move forward. And, you know, then you're always looking at where's your best use of technology as far as cameras. Sure. How do you, how do you get, you know, the best out of that and keeping that cutting edge there. I mean, as a micro business, you're always working with in a budget that maybe isn't that, uh, you know, um, big time company out of Hollywood or New York or, you know, those types of places, which we're, we're, we're not trying to be those people. So you have to look at what can you do? How do you fit that within your budget? And where can you, where do you rise and take that level of uh, uh, creativity? Where's your level of technology? Um, you know, we use software to where we can, you know, we're using Zoom here and uh, we have technology that we're using. We have our, our live video editing software that we do live stuff with that we can bring callers in from all over the place as well. Um, so we keep, uh, we keep that it's vMix and they keep updating and growing and we're, we're always challenging ourselves to learn more. We do uh, what we call within our own company here, lunch and learns, where I sit with each, you know, each of my kids, I sit with Justin or Lauren uh, during the week and we watch a, uh, a video that that's teaching us something that's you know, uh, what about brand marketing? What about email marketing? What about social media? How do we, how do we get better in these things? How are we listening to professionals? Uh, the same with production. Um, we're, we do a lunch and learn once a week to keep that play, keep our minds going and moving forward. And I think, I think everybody should, I think that's something that you have to work to, to really fit within your schedule as you get busy. It's tough but it's something that I believe is really necessary. I, I, I could, I could, you know, a hundred percent attest to that and agree. Um, you know, I think that always staying ahead is, um, is something that's going to keep pushing your business ahead. Um, mm -hmm. especially with something like technology. I mean, they're always, you know, it's good to have your son, you know, kind of spearheading that too, because I mean, when it comes to people in the generation, even below me, you know, their whole life kind of revolves around being ahead in technology. Um, mm -hmm. uh, you know, there are different apps on the phones, all these different cool things that kind of come out what seems like on like maybe a daily basis. There's something new that you can do, something cool, right. but the cutting edge. Um, so if you're able to be versed in, you know, what the newest things are, um, not even the newest, just how to utilize some of the existing things that are out there to like their full degree, um, you can add a lot of value to your customers. Uh, you can add a lot of value to the production that you're, you know, trying to the production team, like you said, even from, you know, being up to date on um, all the different things that you can do with um, different cameras and everything like that. I mean, it's just one of those things where I think across all businesses, if, if you can keep it top of mind, like you said, sometimes, you know, on a week to week basis within the daily operations, it's easy to get, you know, sucked into a certain project. It's easy to get caught up in um, the day to day, you know, just business operations in general. But if you can set aside time for something like this, where it's like, hey, how can we get better? Did we learn anything new? You know, what's the next thing we want to try to do? Um, you know, where can we implement maybe one of these new apps or something that came out? Um, your business is just going to continue to improve and you're going to be able to continue to um, take on maybe bigger projects or take on different projects because of the fact that you're constantly educating yourself. And that's the key. I, I agree. And you know, we're talking, we talk about when we're building our, uh, building and, and improving on our studio, you know, he, we're looking at having custom build computers, putting it to directly what we want it to be, how we want to utilize it, where, do, where do those things go and how efficient are we in, in how we work. And, uh, you know, the other part of that is then sound within video production, any of those things, sound editing and how, how that comes across. So, we look at all these aspects and continue to grow with that. hundred um, percent. Sound editing is, is, is great too. I mean, sometimes, you know, even just as the podcast, you know, I, I'm filming this in an office and I have some people who, 
I'm sure, I, I hope you haven't, but you know, there's sometimes there's noise going on in the background. Um, I, I need to get some like soundproofing. In here. <laughs> we can, but. we can, we can, we can shoot you some information on that. We made our own, man. We, we, we did a DIY project and it really worked well. <laughs> really? Oh, wow. There yeah. you go. I mean, um, yeah, shoot me some info if you have anything because I'm all ears because I, uh, it can be distracting, but no, just in terms of, um, coming back to applying it, um, and staying ahead of it. I mean, it's all good stuff. And you guys seem like you have some, um, some, some good things in place. And I think that, you know, just to go back to what you said, um, not even, it doesn't have to be even technology. I think taking even time out of each week where you can sit down with your team for like one or two hours and hash out, you know, whether it be sales, whether it be technology, whether it be operational efficiencies or deficiencies, um, you know, take that time to sit with your team, everyone kind of collaborating, you know, having um, a good agenda, maybe when you go into those things, just as to what you're trying to accomplish and then leave with action items, whether it be anything. Um, I think it's so vital in staying on the same page because, you know, for me, what I've noticed, and, and I'm sure for you and, and a lot of people can say this is that if everybody's on the same wavelength, everyone's kind of on the same page and, and heading towards the same goal, then that's when things start to fall into place and happen. Um, but if you don't take the time to um, kind of constantly stay in communication about, you know, what that goal might be, whether it be, again, stay in front of technology or, or making your operations better um, and things start to drift off, you know, you, that's when maybe little mistakes or things start to get overlooked or people start, you know, their goals start to get unaligned. Um, and not saying that you can't operate like that and that it's not always possible to meet every single week, but just like keeping that, being mindful of that as an entrepreneur that you have to, um, you know, really take time and, and continue to hash those things out over and over and over again so that you can keep everybody on that straight and narrow path is, um, is what ultimately is going to get you to your goals or, or make the business what you want it to be. I personally think, I mean, absolutely. I agree. We've gone, you know, a month or two before without having a meeting and like, and then the checklist just starts getting bigger, you know what I mean? Because <laughs> people aren't meeting all the time. So there's no, no one's checking those boxes off. And, uh, so I'm like, what am I doing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it can be a little bit um, crazy, but for anybody out there listening, you know, as you start to build out a team, um, you don't have to meet every day. I mean, but staying, you know, keeping being mindful that setting aside time to to check boxes and then, you know, set action items after, um, whether it be for technology or anything like that is going to be kind of key to, like, like we said, just continuing to stay on that straight and narrow road. Yeah. And, and, you know, to that point, you know, it's something we set in, I set in motion with them. We, we meet once, I meet once a week with each department, uh, my son, my daughter, we do that separately. And then on a quarter, uh, we do that once a week and we, and then on a quarterly basis, we all get together and look at the company, where are we at, all of our clients, what we're doing, how we're moving forward, making sure that everything is on track. And I think those, like you said, if you don't do that, it's amazing what piles up and all of a sudden you're like, how did, how did, how did, how did that not get done? Right. And I think that's a tough thing when you're talking about micro business. Um, and that's why, you know, we talk about this all the time. We use this term. I, I know there's a lot of people that like to use the term small business, but man, we're not a small business. We're a micro business, small business. If you look at the S uh, small business administration, it's usually 50 employees and up is small business. And then you get into medium and it goes higher. So, you know, a majority of the businesses in the United States at this level are micro businesses. Micro businesses, yeah. And yeah. how many hats do you have to wear in order to get something done? Yeah. And <laughs> right? You've been there, right? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, sometimes so, I feel like I'm walking around lids because there's so many hats. <laughs> I like that. I, I like lids. <laughs> That's a good spot. <laughs> and so it, it just becomes, and all of a sudden, you know, your, your, your hats are falling over your eyes and you can't see no more. And you're just like, what am I doing? And it happens to all of us at times. And so I think that's, that is a, that is one of the things that I really wanted to, to make sure that we talked about that. We set as much infrastructure in place and had these things in place that, we could keep ourselves moving forward that way. I think it's difficult. 
I think so too. I think you've, you've approached the business and you know, it seems like um, for a very strategic way in that standpoint and recognizing that, you know, if you're going to be a business, you're going to be a successful micro business. Um, you know, you've taken a lot of the steps that I think you need to do right at the very beginning, job descriptions, recognizing that department meetings need to be um, key. I mean, that's, you know, all the right things. A lot of people find themselves starting a business, just coming up with an idea, diving into it, and then figuring out those things later. Um, I think it's important to figure out those things prior. You know, it doesn't have to be a perfect system, but right. just acknowledging that they need to happen and then building off of them is um, is going to be key to, to building out a, a successful company. Yeah. And Joe, what you said right there is very real. You know, not everything we, we didn't, the things, some of the things we're doing now, we didn't, we weren't doing when we started. Right. And so, and vice versa, it just, you know, the, the, the constant understanding of how to be better yep. and what's working, what's not working. I, I think that's a great point, man. So Brian, tell me, like, I mean, you, you obviously approach this business um, with these things in mind. Um, and it seems like, you know, if I would ask your kids this question, they might answer it with you, but you know, how have you been able to recognize these things? Like, have you had any mentors or role models kind of in your business career that shaped the way that you wanted, you know, your business to be, or is it just something that, you know, you kind of put together yourself? You know, uh, yeah, I've had people that have, uh, influenced me, um, you know, uh, throughout my work experience, um, you know, just going back, my dad's had, a, I've had a lot of influence uh, from my dad working with him in ministry. Um, I, I'm a believer in Jesus Christ. Uh, and uh, I work, I still work in that capacity today with him. Mm -hmm. um, my, uh, I worked a lot with my brother-in-law over uh, a period of years, a uh, guy where he uh, works for uh, Juniper Networks. And uh, he's been, he's been somebody that I've, I've, I've gleaned a lot of information from talking sure. about business and whatnot. And, uh, you know, and then just people that I've, that I've watched and talked to uh, a good friend of mine um, in Wichita, Kansas that I worked with many, it's been a few moons ago. Uh, uh, Chris Tancher, he was always very, very um, strategic in his thought process. What he does, he's still very successful today. And, uh, you know, so yeah, I've had some people that have been, uh, um, very important in, in how I see things and then just continuing to grow and talking to people yep. on a regular basis. I strike up conversations with all kinds of people and just around here in the community and just people I meet and yep. uh, that kind of thing. So, yeah. No, I mean, uh, it's super important. And, and I think, um, you know, that's half the reason why I, I started this podcast to put out content. And then I realized how much value comes into just talking to people who are doing different things, talking to people who might be, you know, older than I am, have more experience than I am, or even younger than I am, and learning things, you know, that I uh, may have missed. I mean, and people of all different walks of life, uh, there's so much you can get from just like having conversations, so much you can pick up on, um, which is why, you know, I've been really putting this podcast as like something, you know, high up on the pedestal of like, you know, what I find important, you know, a important place to put my time is because I've, you know, I've filmed about 85 of these things so far. And I feel like I um, have gained almost like 85 mentors. I mean, the sense that everyone has taught me a different lesson. Everyone's brought up a different point that, um, that kind of sticks with you after you, after you have the conversation. So I totally agree with you. I mean, it's important to just get out there, even if the person does something entirely different than you, um, you know, learn from their perspective, learn from another thing too, is like talking to your employees or in, in your case, your partners too, and, and, and learning what they're seeing and, um, and figuring out, you know, they might have a totally different view on, on things that you are that if anything, it's just going to open your eyes to like other possibilities or why other people are viewing certain things a certain way. So um, yeah, I, I value that tremendously too. And I think it's super important just to continue to try and learn from people. Um, yeah. and then also, you know, where, where it's, um, relevant, trying to talking through people a lot of the times allows you to get some ideas that you might have trapped in your head out into the world. It like starts, so it opens up your mind to maybe some of the things that you've been thinking about and, where they then fit into place um, just by having conversations too. Absolutely. I love conversations just like this talking. Yeah. 
I, I agree wholeheartedly, man. It's great stuff. So my last question for you, Brian, um, you know, this is something that obviously right now with what's going on in the world, you know, COVID um, has been something that's been for a year now, you know, it's been a full, almost 12 months. Mm -hmm. um, and there's obviously, a, you know, so much behind it that has been bad for so many reasons. I mean, the list would go on. We do a whole nother podcast about that, but <laughs> have you, um, you know, kind of learned anything from dealing with something like this that could be maybe um, a bit of encouragement for anybody else who's trying to run a business, start a business, or, you know, go through business um, in this type of environment, um, just, you know, maybe as a leader, just anything that, you know, maybe you thought that dealing with something like this has brought out the positive in another area. Um, you know, I think it, it, it boils down to the relationships. I mean, it's tough because I know everybody has their own ideas about things. But having conversations, talking to people, I think one of the most difficult things for us in these situations, and, you know, it's, it's a much politicized situation, and that's the tragedy of it. Sure. The thing about it is, is, is making sure you understand for yourself what's going on. Um, I think that's the biggest thing that people, and we've, and in my discussions with other people is, Go find out for yourself. Don't just, if you hear something, if you're talking to people, especially business-wise, because there have been so many people that have had to, their businesses shut down and their livelihoods gone, their, their life work just destroyed, which is so sad. And I say to people all the time, hey, get back to business as usual get back to it. We've got to, I was just do, recording a, a piece for our hump day with the rep. And that's what I said. We're here today to get, uh, get back to business as usual. And I'm, I believe we are fortunate where we live. A lot of people have taken that attitude. Um, and, uh, we've, we've, and you can see the economy coming back Yep. and it's yep. not as bad as in some other areas. Um, we have some good points. I mean, being mindful of of everyone's opinion is, is definitely having conversations, like you said, but at the yeah. end of the day, you know, you got to learn for yourself. You got to interpret yourself. You got to believe in your interpretation um, and then apply it. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And, and not to say that, you know, the um, whatever's going on isn't real or isn't like, um, you know, a, a danger, but at the end of the day, I mean, educate yourself on what it is. Yep. educate yourself on where you stand within it, you know, take the proper precautions to avoid, you know, becoming like a super spreader or something like that, but then <laughs> get back to bit, like get back to doing what you, I mean, cause you, that's how life is going to go on. You know what I mean? Right. You know, and, and so you're, you're totally right. And, and, um, but it goes back to having conversations and, you know, with certain people, um, you know, they might put a lot more of an emphasis in the other direction than you and and not to say either is wrong you know what i mean but um at the end of the day you have to have your own interpretation you have to um and then and, and then use that to fit into the world where you see fit i mean and that at the end of the day is i think it's opened up a lot of our eyes to um you know maybe what our core values are at the end of the day a lot of yeah. times um even outside of business right Right. And, you know, there's the thing, like you said, I'm a big believer in this. If you have the relationships and you're talking to people, Hey, look, this do I've been to the CDC probably once a week for the last, I don't know, eight months because I go and look to see, and the language that's being used, it disturbs me at times because sure. I tell people, look, everybody keeps saying we're in the middle of a pandemic. We're in the middle of this. We're in the middle. No, we're not, according to CDC guidelines. And, and I know that's not a popular thing to say, and I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. That's not my point. But go look. It's just yeah. as simple as that. So yeah. how then do we take and move that conversation forward to where we can talk with people and say, look, let's, let's get, get involved. Here's the thing with business. I think micro business, get involved with your local community, get involved with your local po politicians, talk to those people. That's where it starts. Talk to the local folks yep. because yeah, we all know the national stuff and everything, but you know what? Your County, your city, your state, 
those things actually affect your business more than the national side, more than you sure. think. Oh, so that would be some advice right there. Very good advice, Brian. No, honestly, really is. And, um, and really good stuff overall. I mean, I do thank you very much for coming on here and, um, you know, telling us a little bit about what you guys do, talking to us about family business. I mean, uh, I, I have had done quite a few episodes, but we haven't talked a lot about that, which I think has been a lot of fun to, um, you know, learn about that dynamic, see how you've been, um, because it's something that, you know, I think that, you know, that's a true American dream type of scenario, mm-hmm. starting a business with, with your family and, 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 and you've taken it, some people start business with their brothers, sisters, but you've taken it to the, you know, starting a business with your, uh, with your kids. You know, you hear a lot of the time too, businesses that were started in one generation and then passed down to another generation, but you started it with the second generation, which I think is super cool. I'm sure you guys are, um, you know, really enjoying doing this type of stuff together and, um, you know, God bless you. I mean, this has been awesome. I appreciate you having me on Joe. I really do. It's been a lot of fun. Thank you. It has been a lot of fun. So let's definitely stay in touch. And where can people reach out to you if they want to, um, you know, learn more about what you guys are doing or inquire about your services? Uh, you can uh, check out our website, uh, Red Earth Prod. That's P R O D dot com. Um, all of our contact information is right there. Easiest way to get a hold of us: our emails, phone number, our office phone numbers. Um, so yeah, Red Earth Prod dot com. Beautiful. Thank you so much, Brian. This has been great. Let's stay in touch for sure. Thank you, Joe. Appreciate it. We will.